Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how to write complex half equations, okay? And so, so in some instances, we won't be given a lot of information about a reduction or oxidation process. Okay, we might just be told that, you know, we're starting with an element, starting with an element A, okay, and we're ending up with an element B, okay, through some process of either oxidation or reduction, okay? And this can be, and this can be quite difficult to fill in the gaps in this reaction especially when we have what's called a polyatomic ion or an ion containing more than one element or more than one atom such as nitrate and so we might be ending up with oxygen okay so here um, you know we can balance you can we can balance all we like we can add electrons in but you know we've got this nitrogen here and we've got multiple oxygens on either side and the number of oxygens is unequal so it can be very difficult in this situation for example to uh, to, to you know easily create a uh, a half equation representing the process. Okay, so we've got four simple steps that allow us to really easily, uh, really easily write and balance these complex half equations. Okay, so the first step we have to make, okay, is we balance the element. So obviously, what we're going to do is we're going to balance the element. that is undergoing a change in its oxidation number. Okay, so we know that uh, when we're talking about reactants and products, we're not talking about, I mean, when we're talking about reductants and oxidants, we're not talking about the individual element that undergoes the change in oxidation number. We're talking about the whole iron or the whole molecule that contains that element, okay? But in this case, what we're doing is we're just balancing the element and only the element that is undergoing a change in oxidation number. Okay, so that's our first step. Number. Okay, that's the first step to, to writing these complex half equations. Make sure this make sure this element that's undergoing the change, make sure they're the same number of that element on either side. Okay, the next step. Okay, is you know sometimes as I showed you before there was an extra nitrogen involved. That was not uh, would not was not undergoing any change, and it was going to be difficult to include that nitrogen and balance it on either side. Okay, so often and more likely, what we're going to be dealing with is we're going to end up with oxygens or hydrogens that are unbalanced. Okay, more often than not, rather than finding a nitrogen, we're going to find oxygens or hydrogens that will be unbalanced. Okay, so the second step is to balance your oxygens, balance any oxygens that are floating around. balance oxygens by adding H2Os, by adding H2O molecules appropriately. Okay, so what I mean by appropriately is say uh, if say reactant A has a uh, has two oxygen has two oxygen atoms in in this iron. Say atom A, say product reactant. Sorry, say reactant A is an iron that has multiple oxygens in it, and the oxygens aren't undergoing a change in oxidation number. And say product B has no oxygens. Okay, so there are some oxygens here. Okay, zero oxygens here. Let's in fact say that there are three oxygens here. Okay, so if there's three oxygens in this uh, in this reactant A and none in this product B, then what we're going to do is we're going to add three waters to this side. Okay, that but thereby adding three oxygens to the right hand side to make the oxygens equal. Okay, so that's the second step. We're adding, you know, we're adding this uh, the number of water molecules to, to whichever side is required, and we're adding the appropriate number such that they're the same number of oxygen atoms on either side of the equation. Okay, that's that's step number two. Okay. Step number three, you know, by adding water um, in order to balance the, uh, the oxygen atoms, we've also added hydrogen. Okay, so step number three is to balance the hydrogen. So balance the hydrogens that we've added. So balance hydrogens by... Sorry, I've just realized this should say by adding. So here we're going to, we're going to balance the hydrogens by adding 
protons or H plus or hydrogen ions. We do that by adding hydrogen ions appropriately. So that's a pretty similar process to the way we've added oxygen. Okay, we've added oxygen so that we have the same number of oxygens on either side. What we're going to do next is we're going to add hydrogens appropriately. So we're going to add hydrogen ions so that there are the same number of H's on either side. Okay, so for example's sake, let's say that neither A nor B contained any hydrogen, okay, contained no hydrogen, okay, but they still had three oxygens here and none here, and so we still added three water molecules here. Okay, the next step, step three, is to balance the hydrogens by adding H positive, uh, positive H ions appropriately, okay, so now we've got zero here, zero here, and six H's here, six hydrogens. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to add six hydrogens there. I'm not going to put a posh for yes there, we're just going to do that. Okay, so now we've kept that balanced. Okay, and then the final step, it's a pretty, pretty straightforward step, is we're going to balance charge. by adding electron this time we're adding electrons appropriately okay so I'm going to show you how to do this now in a uh, in a more specific example okay so what we have here Let's say that we are told, this is one that you'll probably come across, you're very likely to come across, okay, but it's a pretty tricky one to uh, handle. So say you're told, you're told that you have Cr2O7 to be minus. Okay, and you're told that it somehow reacts to produce chromium-3 ions. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to follow these four steps and show you how it can be done. Okay, so first, the first step is to balance the element undergoing the change in oxidation number. So I'll try and sort of color code these so we can get a really good idea. Okay, so we want to balance the element undergoing the change in oxidation number. Okay, so here we know that uh, the, uh, the oxygen has, the oxygen is more electronegative, oxygen, the oxidation number of the oxygen will be minus two. The seven oxygens giving a total of minus 14. All right, and therefore we want to get to minus two. Okay, so to get from minus 14 to minus two, we need to add 12. Okay, so that means between these two chromium atoms, we need to add 12 to the total oxidation number. Okay, so that means each chromium atom needs to add six. Okay, so each chromium atom has an oxidation number of plus six. All right. So that means, and obviously over here we can see that uh, the uh, the oxidation number here is going to be plus three. So chromium is undergoing the change in oxidation number. So to balance chromium, because chromium is the, is undergoing the, this change, all we need to do we've got two here, one here. So we just put a two there. Okay, and that's step one done. Okay, next we're going to do step two. So we're going to balance the oxygens by adding water molecules appropriately. So that's pretty simple. We've got seven oxygens here. Each H2O molecule has one oxygen. So we're going to add another seven here. Okay, so that's that step done. Next, we're going to balance the height, balance H's by adding po protons appropriately. Okay, so we've got we've got no protons here, no pro we've got no hydrogen. Sorry, here no hydrogens here, and 14 hydrogens here. Seven water molecules, and each water molecule has two. So we've got 14 hydrogens altogether. So that means we're going to add 14. So let's use it. Let's use a different color to keep things nice and clear here. So we're going to add 14 hydrogens 
Okay, in order to keep things balanced. Okay, and now the last step, the last thing that we have to do, right, is balance the charge by adding electrons appropriately. Okay, so all we have to do is calculate the charge on either side. Here we've got plus 14 from the 14 uh, height protons. We've got minus 2 because of the 1 iron with a charge of negative 3. And we've got plus 6 due to the 2 chromium 3 ions. Okay, so this gives a total of 12 and 6. Okay. So in order to make the charge balance, we need to subtract 6 from this, this side. Okay, At the moment we've got plus 12, we need to bring it down to plus 6. And we do that by adding 6 electrons. Okay, and so there we have the fully, uh, fully balanced half equation for the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the reduction of uh, this Cr207 2 minus iron. Okay, so if we want to write that out in full, write Cr2. O seven So there we have that two chromium lines. And seven water molecules. Okay, so that is the final final half equation. Okay, and so there we see how these four steps. Okay, because you probably have to memorize them, but they're pretty simple to memorize. These four steps allow us to not only uh, to they, they allow us to you know both write and balance. A, a, com a very complex half equation that you know involves different atoms and different ions. Okay, so here's here's the example, here's the end result, and uh, yeah. So just remember those four steps.